Welcome to Stable Sword. Today we're taking a trip on the wild side with a quick introductory tutorial to a data structure called a trip, which is a combination of a binary search tree and a heap. We'll take a look at the problem that is designed to solve and then analyze its performance characteristics. As we all know, binary trees are awesome for storing and retrieving data. Actually, no. Binary trees could be terrible if not balanced. Balanced binary trees are awesome for storing and retrieving data. So the name of the game is how to construct a binary tree so that each node has roughly the same number of child nodes both on the right and left sides of it. And moreover, how to keep it balanced as more nodes are added and deleted later on. This is a typical image that comes to mind when thinking of a binary search tree. For any node, the children on the left side are smaller in value, while children on the right side are bigger in value. However, this is also a valid binary search tree, since for every node, all of the children on the right are bigger. So given a data set that we want to store in a tree, if we construct the tree naively by simply inserting values into the tree sequentially, a sorted array would result in a horribly unbalanced tree that resembles a linked list. One thing we could do is first shuffle the dataset randomly. With a decent shuffle, you'd expect to get a reasonably balanced tree. It probably won't be perfectly balanced, but good enough for government work. But what if you don't have all the values at the start of the construction? And what if, as the time goes on, more nodes need to be added or deleted from the tree? TRIPS solve this problem by assigning a randomly generated number to each of the nodes, called priority. Then the tree is constructed as if it's a heap, with maximum priority value being at the root of the tree. Note that now the tree construction needs to satisfy two conditions simultaneously. Number one, each left child value is smaller than its parent, while each right child value is greater than its parent. This is the old binary search tree rule. And number two, each child priority is smaller than its parent priority. This is the max heap rule. So how do we ensure that both of these conditions are satisfied? Well, when inserting a node, we still walk down from the root following the rules of a standard binary search tree, comparing values to each other. We go left if the value is smaller than the parent, right if the value is bigger than the parent, and eventually create a new leaf. Then, if we find that the priority of the node is greater than parent's priority, we do tree rotations to fix this. If you remember, tree rotations work like this. Note that the rotation does not break the rule of binary search tree. Here is an example of how the tree would be constructed if the nodes are fed in a sequential order, but then rotation is applied based on priority floating higher priority nodes to the top. As we're doing these rotations, we could potentially end up walking back to the root of the tree. In a balanced tree, walking to the root takes at most order log n steps, since that's the height of the tree. And so the whole operation will take order log n expected steps to walk down to insert a new node, and then additional order log n number of rotations. But what guarantees that this results in a balanced tree? Since the priorities are assigned randomly, the number of rotations done would also be random. So each node is moved up or down by some random amount. This is equivalent to having all of the nodes at the outset, shuffling them, and then constructing a regular binary tree in that randomized order. The construction would follow the typical rule of going left if we need to find a smaller value all right if we need a larger one. In fact, both of the approaches would result in exactly the same tree. Ergon and Seidel, in their 1989 paper called Randomized Search Trees, show that while there is no hard guarantee that the resulting tree will be balanced, the probability of the height of a trip with n nodes being greater than natural log of n by a factor of some constant c is bounded by this formula. To get a sense of what this formula means, for a trip with 10,000 nodes, the probability that the height of the tree will be greater than 100 is 1 in 2.5 billion. 
So you're telling me there's a chance. So that's the basic concept behind a trip. It's a data structure that uses randomness to construct and maintain a balanced binary search tree. There are other data structures that accomplish the same thing, such as the red-black tree and AVL tree, both of which will be subjects of our future episodes. But for now, it's suffice it to say that they don't use randomness, yet have hard guarantees that the resulting data structure is in fact balanced. Now, can you come up with a real-world example where you'd use a trip over those data structures? I for one have a hard time coming up with an example where your data comes in pairs, where you need to be able to do binary searches on values and possibly have instantaneous access to the data point with the highest priority, while the priority being completely independent of the value and have a random distribution. But hey, I could be wrong. I'd love to know what you think on the subject, so please use the comment section below to let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please click that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and happy tripping.